Hi. You know, Enoch had an incredible walk with God. He knew God. He was one of those people who developed a walk with God in such a way that one day he went on a walk with God and just never came back. I do really believe that this kind of relationship, there is a mantle, the Enoch mantle, and this kind of relationship and this kind of mantle is available to you and I today. You know, way back there, Enoch saw the coming of the Lord. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, it's recorded in the Bible for us in Jude chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, And Enoch, also the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. How did he know that? That that scripture is a quote from a book which was around in the time of, of um, Jesus, and it is available today, but it was called the, the, the Book of Enoch, and uh, you can get it from Amazon.com today, but it was around in the days of Jesus, and that was a quote from that book, um, because um, he wrote many, many things which are not in our, in our Bible, and... Um, there is enough in this Bible to tell us how to get to heaven and re the story of redemption and many, many other things. But there's lots of things which were not written. You know, the Bible says if the things which were written, which Jesus did, it would fill up hundreds of books. You know, and so Enoch had this kind of relationship with the Lord, a great walk with God. And we're going to have to have a look at this, you know, and just see how and why this is available to you and I today. You know, Enoch's life was prophetic of the end time church, and it's important to understand this. The Bible tells us he was the seventh from Adam. In other words, he was the seventh generation from Adam, and seven is the number of completeness. And we've come to the end of the, the, the sixth day and entering, beginning to enter into the seventh day in God. And the life, his life, is a picture. The Bible tells us that he walked with God at a certain point of time in his life when he knew and saw that the great flood was coming. From that point on, it says, he walked with God. We see a great flood coming on the earth in these last days. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in this day and age. And that caused him to turn to God in a, in, in a way, uh, a whole new consecration to God. He walked with God and was eventually translated. And you know, this mantle is available. It's becoming available to the church today. That kind of a relationship is, is becoming available for us today because his life was a picture of the end time church. And there were going to be a company of people, a lot of people who will begin to see this, believe this, and enter into it and begin to walk. And these people will begin to experience transformation, tra great transformation while still in the flesh. And they will learn to walk with God as Enoch walked with God. How do we enter into what Enoch had? How, how do we participate in that mantle which is becoming available to the church in this hour? Well, you know, he was a friend of God. And friends learn to communicate with each other. They learn to confide in each other. And the Bible tells us this. Let me read it to you. In John chapter 15, and verse 15, he says, Jesus was speaking, and he said, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. Why? For all that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. That's what happened to the relationship with Enoch. All that he heard of God was related to Enoch. Enoch knew some wonderful things. All things that I have heard of my father I have made known unto you. And although many through the ages, you know, have experienced translation more than we realize, this mantle is primarily available for the end time church. And to become a friend of God... That's the walk, you see, and he learned how to commune with God on a daily basis and a walk with him. And as he pursued this and as he continued in this, slowly but surely his relationship changed. 
and eventually he was translated. We're going to look at this in more detail in this particular study. Enoch's life was prophetic of the end time church. And we need to look at this for a little while. And just to look at the significance of this, he was the seventh generation from Adam. And uh, seven, of course, is a number of completeness. And he saw the coming of the Lord. He saw things, events that would take place in these end times. And the spirit of Enoch is becoming available, or the mantle of Enoch is becoming available now for, who, for those of us who are in the end times. Enoch lived in a very special time and period in history of our own humankind. He lived at the very dawn of civilization. Now, Enoch's father was a man named Jared, and uh, who was a direct descendant of Seth. And uh, Enoch was of the seventh generation from Adam. In fact, Enoch was born um, 622 years after Adam was created. So, this really means now, if we think about this, that Adam was alive when Enoch was born. So when Enoch was born, Adam was very much alive. In fact, Enoch was a contemporary with Adam for over 300 years. We don't really think about this because we don't look at the lifespans and work it out. Enoch, you know, would have sat on Adam's knee when he was a boy. He would have sat on his knee many, many times and talked to Adam about things, what it was like in the Garden of Eden. What was it like to walk with God? What, what was it like to have all the animals tame and know them all by name? And What was the tree of life like? What was the tree of good and evil like? They would have talked for hours, I'm sure. And uh, what was it like to walk with God in the garden? What did his footsteps sound like? Adam would have told him many wonderful, wonderful things which would have fired the imagination of Enoch. Somehow, I believe this affected Enoch in a profound way. Because you see, Enoch also found a way to walk with God like Adam had had in the Garden of Eden. Now what is so significant about this is that Enoch found this way to walk with God. He found a way to walk with God after the fall and before the cross. Now this is very significant. If it's possible for Enoch to walk with God, find a way to walk with God, that was be before Jesus came and died for us on the cross, then it's certainly possible for you and I to find this kind of walk with God today. And it's important to recognize that. You know, Enoch wrote the book of Enoch, which is three volumes, and uh, which became part of a collection of Jewish writings from or about 200 BC to 200 AD. And as, you know, jo Jude quoted from this book, in Jude 1, 14 and 15, and um, talked about the seventh from Adam who prophesied about the coming of the Lord and the days of the Lord. And uh, in verse 15 of Jude 1 says, To execute judgment upon all and convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds and their hard speeches, and so on. And uh, in fact, there is a reasonably credible legend but only a legend, but it's very credible that Enoch was the father of writing. Jesus also spoke of these times, these end times. In, John, in Luke ch chapter 17 and verse 26, he said, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. So, as it was in the days of Noah... Now, it's going to be the same condition just before the coming of the Lord. Now, the days of Noah were very, very interesting. As it was in the days of Noah, Methuselah, which was Enoch's son, lived for 969 years. That's a long lifespan. 
and they were literal years. And the year that he died, the flood came on the earth. So Enoch's generation was alive up to the flood. They were alive when God said, My spirit shall not always strive with man. He was alive when, when in Genesis 6, 3, God brought that world to an end. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it will be the same in the days in which we are living, these end times. And just prior to the coming of the Lord, we see a parallel in the world of Enoch, Enoch's world and Enoch's generations. You see, during Enoch's world, there was violence and bloodshed and immorality of the worst kind, which caused genetic changes that produced giants in the land. There were famines, there were wars, and incredible violence. But on the bright side, Enoch was able to walk with God in an incredible way. Enoch and Noah's area, era were prophetic of the end-time church. Today, the mantle of Enoch is becoming available to the end-time church. Special grace is being released. Special time and special grace to those who are hungry and determined to have the same kind of walk with God as he did. There were three categories of people um, in the days of Noah. One was Enoch, who was translated. The other was Noah and his family, who rode through the storm. And uh, that those who then also died in the flood. So three categories, Enoch's company, Noah's, and those who died in the flood. And the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in these end times. Three categories of people are found in the book of Revelation, chapter 12. Revelation 12, in verse 1, it says, There appeared in a wonder, a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and on her head were a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon, having seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. And his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven, and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, woman which was ready to be delivered of her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man-child who was to be caught up to God and to his throne. But the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared for God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days, or three and a half years. See, we have two categories of people here in, in which the scriptures which we've just read. There's a woman, or the church. The woman here speaks of the church. The church in scripture is always referred to as a woman or a bride. Now, this cannot be referring to Mary, as some will say, that this was Mary and she brought forth Jesus. Because, well, Mary never fled into the wilderness for three and a half years after the birth of Jesus. And this, um, this man-child was birthed out of the church, would have the, would, having the role of ruling in the millennium. Reign of Christ over the nations. Verse 5 tells us this. And like Enoch was caught up to the throne. And uh, we know that Jesus was fought 30 years on this earth and before he ascended to the Father. These, you know, they were caught up to the throne. They were like Enoch. These are those who were free from the corruption of this world. And they were translated to the throne of God to receive commissioning from God. These are those people who became love, the man-child. These are those who reach a level of conformity to the image of Jesus while still in the flesh. Verse, Revelation 14 and verse 1 says this, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on mine Zion, and with him forty and four thousand, having the Father's name written on their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sang, as it were, a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty-four thousand, which were redeemed or translated from the earth. 
These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men of the earth, being the first fruits unto God, the first to achieve this, unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now let's have a look at this. It says, these were people who were not defiled with women. Now that woman is Babylon. Not defiled with the great woman of Babylon. Uh, Revelation 17.3 says, So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy and having seven heads and ten horns. And this woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked in gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abomination of the filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots, the Abomination on the Earth. Now listen to this. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Now the Enoch company, these were the first fruits. The first to reach maturity as fully grown sons of God in the earth. So we have the church here in Revelation 12. The church bringing forth a man-child. And so, let's think about this. Let's think first of all about outer court Christians. Now, third company, or the outer court Christians, they are the remainder of those who are left behind after the church of the church company. It says, and the dragon, in Revelation twelve seventeen, was angry with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's the seed of the church, the remnant of her seed, which kept the commandments of God, and they have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So these were Christians. They are not Jews. They have the testimony of Jesus. But they're not in a place to be protected. He made war with them. And in Revelation 13 and verse 7, it was given him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given unto him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. You know, I've never heard a sermon on the saints being overcome uh, by the enemy like this. People don't preach upon it. You see that it's, it's like we have this situation here. We have the church. It brings forth a man-child. Out from the church in these last days are going to come a company of people like Enoch. These are those who are not defiled with the system of Babylon. There's none of Babylon in them. Commercial Babylon, spiritual Babylon, none of those things within them. She, the, she's free from all of those sins of Babylon. Clean and free from them. They're like pure virgins, you see. They are free, not being defiled with this woman, Babylon. They are those who have come to the place where they're purified before the Lord where their body, soul, and spirit has become clean and pure, and they've learned to walk with God, to even to the point of translation, and having access to that realm through translation. This is a company of people, see, in these last days, who are birthed out of the church. And uh, it's, it's uh, then the Bible says, very, very clearly, that after this, the church is called, called away to a place for another three and a half years of refinement, but safety. But there's another company. You see, we have the man child, which is the holiest of all in the tabernacle. We have the, the church, the holy place, the woman. We have the remnant of her seed, which are in the outer court of the church experience. And it says the enemy made war with them and over them. Now people get angry when we talk about these things because we always want a positive message. Well, this message is positive, but it's also a warning. You know, we see a whole company of people here that don't make it out alive. They make it to heaven, but they make it, don't make it out alive. They lose their lives in these end times. 
Now, I'm not going to get into eschatology of all this. This is not my purpose. We're talking about a principle. We're talking about the principle of Enoch and the mantle of Enoch and uh, how that it is available to you and I today, this kind of walk with God. And the fact that Enoch found a way, he found a way to walk with God between the fall of Adam and Jesus coming to the earth. So in that period, before redemption was completed by Jesus, he found a way to walk with God. In such a way he saw the end time events displayed. And if he can do that under the old covenant, you can do it under the new covenant. It's not for some specialized super saint. It's for you and I to be able to enter into. See, we need to stop and we need to think about these things because the whole, whole concept of being born again, coming into the kingdom of God, being, um, you know, Christians and everything's wonderful, our name is written in heaven, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful thing and we'll just wait out now the process of time until we die and go to heaven was never God's purpose. We are supposed to be redeemed, body, soul, and spirit, by the blood of the Lamb. These company are the first fruits of those that will follow. And the church is caught away into the wilderness, and she's prepared as a bride. She too would receive her, res her resurrection body. But you know, there was a company there who, who were the first fruits, the first to make it through. It's important we understand this. It's important they came to a place while still in the flesh of overcoming the intense desire in seeking God and the pursuit of God until they were trained, changed from one level of glory to another, even as by this, the Spirit of the Lord. And this happened to them because they beheld the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18, Beholding the Lord, they are changed from one level of glory to another, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. How would it happen? I had access to the Lord at this deeper level. Beholding the Lord. You see, this is not just beholding the Lord in the Scriptures. This is seeing the Lord. Being in His manifest presence. Walking with the Lord. And that exposure to the Lord changed them. Into His likeness and into his image, because we know what we worship, we become like. What we behold, what we fix up, uh, focus on, we connect with. We've been through all of that, we understand that. This is how this transformation will begin to take place. And it's important that we understand this. Enoch was a very special person, but he was a picture of the end time church. And the things that happened in that Times, ancient times, so long ago, the days of Noah, as it were in these times that Enoch walked the earth, as it was in these times, so it shall be just prior to the coming of the Lord. Those three companies will exist in the earth, in the church, as it was in the days of Noah. Great violence, all of these things. But we need to look deeper than that. We need to see who existed. What were the conditions like on the earth? Noah walked with the Lord. Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah is a picture, you see, of the church. But Enoch, you see, is another picture. And there were those who drowned in the flood. The Bible refers to them, those who were sometimes disobedient in the days of Noah. We cannot escape these truths. We cannot escape what the Bible has written, what's written in the Bible. And what we understand is the scriptures. They are the scriptures. They are the word of God. And I'm not saying these things to frighten you. I'm saying these things to challenge you. We must press on. You know, the day is almost spent. We must press on finest hour of the church still lies ahead. Your finest hours still lie ahead, no matter what age you are. 
as long as you will be in pursuit of God to find him and walk with him in the way that he said you can walk with him. Like he said to the disciples, I don't want to call you servants anymore, I want to call you friends. That's what Adam was with the Lord. Because he said, you know, the servant doesn't really know what the Master is doing. But I've called you friends, and everything I've heard of the Father, I've shown, I'll tell you, I'll show you. That's the kind of relationship he's talking about. A bond-servant relationship with the Lord. To escape what is coming upon the face of the earth. Now Jesus said, pray, pray that you escape those things which are coming upon the face of the earth. He warned us. He said, it's not automatic. Pray. Seek God. Dwell in the secret place. Find that place of walk with God in the secret place of the Most High. As it was in the days of Noah, Enoch, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Just pray. Father, I pray today that you'll allow these truths not to unsettle your people but to challenge them. To let them see the days that we are living in are serious days. That there have never been a time like this in history. We're living at the end of time as we know it. The coming of the Lord draws near. and These companies of people exist in the earth. They exist in the church, and the church is about to bring forth a new level of relationship with you. And out of the church is going to come people who will walk with you in a new dimension. And the time has been accelerated, and the grace has been given to achieve this and enter into it. And I pray, Lord, that you will speak to the hearts of your people. Let them see that this kind of walk is possible for them. Oh, we ask it in Jesus' name.